Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. In the past, I've done a tutorial on using basic index and match. And I also did one where we could add to that how to sum the whole row or whole column in that array. Today, we're going to add another twist to that where we can select just a certain portion of a row or column in that range. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. In previous tutorials, we did the basic index and match where we had a choice of product and a choice of month. And this formula here used index and match to match the proper row and column in this array and pull the proper value. And again, if I change the different product or change the different month, it would update that automatically. I'll leave a link to that tutorial down below or in the notes. Then in another tutorial, we added this section here where not only were we able to pick the cell at the intersection of row and month, but we added to it that it would also grab the total or the sum of the full month, in this case a column, or the full product, in this case a row. And again, I'll leave a link to that tutorial in the notes below. But recently, I received a request asking what if we just wanted to not only have these calculated, but also we just wanted a certain portion of a row or column. Let's say I only wanted February to November of a certain product, or only product two through eight of a certain month. How would we do that? Well, let me expand this here, and this is how we're going to do that. Now, notice I've had to add the product, but I also had to have a beginning month and an ending month in order to generate the sales. And this formula that we're going to use is going to be the sum with indirect address and match functions. So let's walk through and see how we're going to do that. So in our scenario here, we've listed each product and we've set up a beginning month and we've set up an ending month. And then we're just going to use the basic sum function in order to sum that range. Now typically if we just did it manually February to November on product 6, product 6 in February is cell C7 and November is L7. So I would just want to add the sum C7 to L7. So that's ultimately what we want to get to. The key is how do we define dynamically cell C7 and cell L7. Well, we're going to use a combination of a couple different functions. The indirect function, the address function, and the match function. Match works similarly that we've had in the past where you would take the value you're trying to match in an array with an exact match to determine your row and column number. And again, we've gone through that in previous posts, so you can go to those previous links I mentioned to understand that a little bit better. But that defines which row and which column we're going to choose. The key to this is the address and the indirect functions. So let's move down here a little bit and see what those two functions do. So if I type equal address, you'll see it creates a cell reference as text. Now that's the key. It creates a cell reference as text giving specific row and column numbers. So you can see with our portion of the formula for address, we use the match function to pick a specific intersection of a row and column. And with the address function, it's going to create a cell reference that is text. Now, we wrap that address function in an indirect function. Now let's take a look at what indirect does. So equals indirect. Indirect returns the reference specified by a text string. So the address function gives us a reference that is a text. The indirect function then converts that text to an actual reference that Excel can use to calculate whatever we're trying to accomplish. So here, what we're going to do is I'm going to click into the cell where our formula is, and then I'm going to go up to the Formula tab and go to Evaluate Formula. And let's walk through and see what this formula does. 
So first we're going to work on the match functions. I'm going to match B21 and B21 is our product number. So that's going to indicate our row. I'll hit evaluate. It's going to take product 6 within that range that's an exact match and that's going to make it a 7. Now we're going to take for the column B22 and B22 is February, so that gives us February. February in that range A1 to M1 is going to give us column 3. So I have row 7, column 3, and the address for that is C7. So if we go up, I'm going to hit close here. So C7 right here is in column 3, and it's in row 7. So that gives us the C7 portion of our formula that we want to use in our sum function. Let's go back to our evaluate formula. I'll move a little through this to get to the point that we were. Now it's going to take indirect and convert that text to an actual useful value. Now it's going to make it the value C7. Now we're going to work on the other portion of our sum formula. Again, the match B21 and B21 is the product 6, so we're going to stay in the same row, and that's going to give us a 7. Then the next one for the other portion of that is going to give us a 12, which again is November. So the address of 712, I'll hit evaluate, that's going to give us L7. But again, that's as text. So we convert that using the indirect function to an actual cell reference. And now I get the sum C7 to L7. I hit evaluate and I get 12,118. Let's take a little closer look at our address function. I'm going to go ahead and click in to my cell and go up to my formula bar and click in here. Now my row number is again the match which is going to be for B21, which is our product. Our column number here is the match, which is B22, which is February, so that's going to give us that. Then we have our absolute number and our A1 number. Now our absolute number, if I take a second and I delete that and then go to choose that, you can see I have a choice of an absolute cell reference, an absolute row relative column, relative row absolute column, or relative in both cases. So that's going to be valuable whether you're going to be copying this formula, just like the typical absolute relative and mixed cell references. So again, I'm going to choose one there. And the last portion, the A1 portion, you can see that's basically if you want the A1 style or the R1C1 style. So again, we chose the A1 style, the more traditional style of referencing um, your cell identifications in Excel. So that's basically it. Again, just to kind of recap, the, the key here is that we use the sum function and then we needed to, to determine what the range of that cell is. And we use the match functions to give us the row and column numbers for the address function. The address function returned a text version of that cell location. And then the indirect function converted that text to an actual usable reference that Excel can use in our sum function in order to sum the range we want. As we choose the different values here, it's going to give us uh, the different sum based on what we're trying to accomplish. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.